Greetings and salutations. This is Akirishin. In this video, I will be reviewing the Chance Vaught F7U Cutlass, an American multi role fighter. This aircraft features four 20 millimeter cannons with damage per second of 180, which is kind of low. Uh, a rate of fire of 600 which rounds per minute which I would say is medium and an effective firing range of 820 with meters which is pretty long. Uh, this aircraft also features four 500 pound bombs which do damage of 5200 and have a damage radius of 75 meters. I would I would say that these bombs are pretty effective and can uh, take out a fairly significant area of ground target. I have equipped this aircraft with the upgrades of Control Surface Adjustment 4, increasing maneuverability in turns by 3%, and Lightweight Airframe 4, increasing maneuverability in all axes by 3%. This aircraft is indicated to be low, have low effectiveness in maneuvering combat, and I can tell you that it lives up to that uh, description. <laughs> uh, so hence the uh, maneuvering upgrades. So equip the aircraft with the improved covering 4 upgrade, which decreases the chance of critical damage to wings and tail by 20% and increases the aircraft's hit points by 5%. For the PVP that will be featured in this video, I am using Universal Ammunition, which has an equal chance of fire and critical damage. I have equipped this aircraft with automatic fire extinguisher as well as control surface auto trim uh, which automatically restores controllability of wings and tail. I will also be equipping this aircraft with heavy duty control surfaces which increases aircraft maneuverability in all axes for 10 seconds. Again, trying to improve this aircraft's maneuverability, which it sorely lacks. For pilot skills, I have chosen Aerobatics Expert, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 2%, and Aerodynamics Expert, uh, which enhances the percentage effects of our lightweight airframe and our control surface adjustment by 40%. To increase the effectiveness of our four bombs, I have gone with Demolition Expert, which increases damage caused by bombs and rockets and their blast radius by 15%. Of course, this aircraft doesn't have rockets, but it certainly does enhance the uh, bombs that it carries. This uh, aircraft is indicated to have a vulnerable engine, uh, so that is something to be concerned with. You could, for example, instead of control surface auto trim, you could go with automatic engine restarter. Um, but um, I, I've chosen to go with the control surface auto trim. In flying this aircraft, I have not have had many instances where the engine was knocked out, so uh, more so having um, wings and such damaged. Looking at the aircraft specifications, which we will of course be going into more later, uh, its optimum altitude is 1800 meters, its optimum airspeed is 550 kilometers per hour. Average time to turn 360 degrees is 
a whopping 13 seconds, which is very painful if you have a Spitfire on your tail, I can tell you. <laughs> All right, so um, top speed at best altitude is 1,060 kilometers per hour. Paint schemes. This is uh, summer you're currently looking at. Winter. Desert. And finally, marine. Uh, you know, in terms of the aircraft's uh, attractiveness, I, <laughs> this is one you want to meet in a bar with several drinks uh, in your system. <laughs> it's just not the best to look at, I'm afraid to say. Okay, so what we are going to do now is head over to World of Warplanes website and use its compare aircraft tool to compare the F7U with other tier 10 multi-role aircraft so you can see uh, it in context with those other multi-roles. All right, we are here on World of War Planes website using the compare aircraft tool and we have lined up uh, several tier 10 multi-role fighters to compare against the F7U Cutlass. We have gone into each one of these aircraft and fully customized them so that they are at their best. And we have uh, up first the uh, J7W3 and the Thunderstreak. Uh, looking at these aircraft respective uh, armaments, we see that uh, the J7W3 is indicated to have uh, superior armaments, uh, whereas the uh, Thunderstreak is indicated to have inferior armaments, uh, all compared to the F7U. Uh, but going into that a little bit further, as you know, we have the uh, on the Cutlass. We have uh, four 20 millimeter cannons with a damage per second of 180, rate of fire of 600, and effective firing range of 820. If we look at the J7W3, it has four 30 millimeter cannons with damage per second much higher of 300. Uh, a lower rate of fire of 200 and a lower firing range of 640. Uh, so the biggest stat there of significance is the 300 damage per second, which is better than the F7U's 180 damage per second. But I will tell you the J7W3 cannons overheat very rapidly. Um, so that is a limiting factor on those. And if I had to choose between the two, I would say the F7U's 20 millimeter cannons are superior, even though the stat says they're not. Likewise, on the Thunderstreak, it has uh, machine guns, uh, which, you know, the damage per second on those seems pretty pitiful, but it has a huge rate of fire, about a medium uh, range. So, you know, one of the strong benefits of those uh, machine guns is you know you're going to get rounds on the target, uh, especially, you know, even in the fast pace nature of tier 10 uh, combat uh, with, with fast moving uh, jets. And I do need to upgrade to the bomb there on the F7U. All right, so looking at bombs and rockets. Uh, the J7W3 does not have rockets, just like the F7U does not, um, and it is indicated to have inferior uh, bomb, uh, bombs as compared to the F7U. The Thunderstreak is indicated to be superior, and I can say that, that it really is. Uh, 
going into that a little bit uh, more specifically, if you look at the F7U, uh, it, uh, it's bomb. First of all, there are four of them, and they do 5,200 damage a piece, and they have a 75 meter radius. So let's compare that to the bomb on the J7W3. It has two bombs, and they do 4,400 uh, damage, so c clearly inferior uh, to the armament on the F7U. The Thunderstreak, these tiny TIM rockets, and they do less uh, damage, 4,500 versus uh, the 5,200 on the F7U, and slightly uh, less of a radius. But what I would say is that they are more, rockets are just more versatile. Uh, given the choice between a rocket and a bomb, I will take the rocket any day um, because it's just easier to get it on the target. You have to, you don't have, it's easier to line up. It's just easier. Um, and, and then it has 12 of these harm rockets, which, you know, don't do a, a huge amount of damage, 1,500, and have a smaller uh, damage radius, but but you have a bunch of them, and again, it's just it's more versatile. Um, this uh, the Thunderstreak, if you wanted to put bombs on it instead of the Tiny Tim um, rockets, it does similar damage to the F7U, but there are only two of them. I would say for sure the Tiny Tim. Uh, it's, just, it's just more effective, in my opinion. All right, so uh, going on here, if we look at survivability in terms of hit points, uh, the F7U is superior to uh, both the J7W3 and the Thunderstreak in terms of hit points, uh, and therefore also survivability. Uh, top speed at best altitude, the F7U is superior to the J7W3 and the F84 Thunderstreak. Uh, average time to turn 360 degrees. So, you know, in that turning dogfight, uh, which of these aircraft is going to outperform the other? Um, the, both the J7W3 and the Thunderstreak are uh, more than two seconds uh, faster in the turn than the F7U. And that is significant, folks. The F7U just feels like a huge aircraft, honestly. Um, you know, when you when you view it um, from behind as you're flying, it just takes up the whole, <laughs> takes up the whole screen. Um, and the size of an aircraft does affect its, its turning ability. So, you know, two, almost three seconds is, you know, better turning is significant. Uh, in terms of stall speed, the J7W3 uh, is slightly superior to the F7U, whereas the Thunderstreak has the same stall speed. Uh, optimum altitude, the J7W3 is slightly inferior to that of the F7U, and the Thunderstreak is the same. Both the J7W3 and the Thunderstreak will out-climb, in terms of rate of climb, the F7U. Let's uh, take those off the list and move on here. Okay, so moving on, we will now compare the Blum und Voss P215-02, a German aircraft and the I-215, a Russian uh, multi-role fighter. Looking at the armaments, we see that uh, the P-215-02 and the I-215 are said to be superior to that of the F-7U, uh, but let's look into that a little bit further. Uh, looking at the German aircraft, we see that it's cannons have a damage per second of 200, uh, whereas 
the F7U's 20 millimeter cannons have a damage of 180. Uh, also, in the in terms of the rate of fire, the cannons on the P21502 uh, have a 100 rounds per minute advantage over the cannons of the F7U. Um, in terms of effective firing range though, the cannons on the F7U have a 20 meter uh, advantage over those of the P21502. But that key number, damage per second, um, slightly better on the German aircraft. Likewise, the uh, cannons on the I-215 have a damage per second of 290 versus the F-7U's 180. Um, now, of course, and here's, I would say, is the key factor here. The F-7U's rate of fire is 600 rounds per minute. Um, so that's a huge difference. I would rather have, uh, personally, the 600 rounds per minute as compared to 60 rounds per minute. It's a lot harder to hit anything at 60 rounds per minute than it is at 600. You do have a much longer effective firing range on the I-215 than you do the F-7U. But uh, overall, you know, even though from a stats perspective, I-215 is said to be superior. I would say in practice, the F-7U's guns are superior. In terms of bombs and rockets, you see that the F-7U's are indicated to be inferior to those of the P-215-02, but uh, superior to those of the I-215. But let's look into that a little bit further. Looking at the P-215-02, you see that um, it only has rockets. Uh, its rockets are 200 uh, damage versus the 5200 of the bombs on the F-7U. Um, of course, they do have uh, 56 of those. which is a pretty significant difference, but they are salvo fired, so they're, they're going to be fired in a group. Uh, I would say these rockets are better at uh, attacking other aircraft uh, than they are necessarily ground targets. You can use them for ground targets, but uh, they do have rockets um, that are not salvo fired um, at uh, 200 damage but there are only four of those versus the four of uh, bombs on the F-7U that have a much higher uh, damage. In terms of the 215, it has two bombs which are basically the same as in terms of damage and radius as those of the F-7U, but there are only two of them as compared to the four on the F-7U. Uh, hit points, the F-7U uh, is has 100 hit points less than the uh, P-215-02, uh, but 100 more than the I-215. Uh, top speed at best altitude, the F-7U uh, is uh, superior to both the P-215-02 and the I-215 by a pretty good uh, margin. A uh, hundred kilometers per hour difference for the German uh, and 150 kilometers per hour difference for the Russian. Average time to turn 360 degrees uh, the P-215-02, which is not a good turning aircraft, 
uh, it lags behind the F7U by 1.3 seconds, whereas the I215 uh, is faster in the turn by a small margin, 0.8 seconds. Optimum air speed uh, is the same for the F7U and the P21502. Uh, the I215 is slightly uh, inferior, 50 kilometers per hour, as compared to the F7U. Stall speed, uh, both the P21502 and the I215 are going to stall sooner than the F7U. The P21502 uh, is a higher climber. Uh, by uh, 200 meters than the F7U, whereas the F7U is a higher climber than the I215 by 200 meters. The F7U uh, climbs at a higher rate than the P21502, but the I215 climbs at a higher rate than the F7U. So I hope that puts the F7U in context with these other uh, Tier 10 multi-role aircraft and will help you decide what line you want to pursue. So having uh, compared this aircraft to other multi-role Tier 10 aircraft, uh, having looked at my build and uh, its specifications. What we're going to do now is to head into a battle and see how it performs in PvP. So we have drawn the Northern Bridgehead Cold Skies Theater of Operation. We will first head over to the command center, secure that so we can get bombers inbound to enemy assets. That will also tie up their tie up their air assets trying to deal with the bombers. From there we will uh, stay clear of the Ford airstrip and head over to their garrison. Uh, I don't intend to head into the Ford airstrip area unless I can unless I have to uh, because it's just a deadly air area for this aircraft. It's just not maneuverable uh, enough to be able to successfully navigate that area. So we're going to come up here and drop on the radar installations. These bombs have a pretty good area of effect, but it does take a couple to take out the radar installation. Okay, so, you know, I think actually what we will do here is see if we can't sneak around and flank their command center. By then, I am hoping we will have our bombs back. So we'll kind of go around through this area. And see if we can't take that from them. Enemy bombers inbound. Don't let them reach their target. What is this fellow doing way out here? So I'm going to still steer clear of that German ground attack aircraft because I have found that that rear gun just eats this plane up. Alright, 
right, so it just repopulated. We don't have our... don't have our uh, bombs back up yet. But we will in just a moment. And then we'll be able to drop some bombs on these radar installations. There we go. And we'll drop right in between the two buildings. And bammo! That works pretty pretty well. So once again, we'll come over here, drop right between the two buildings. And it's putting a dent. Let's see here. So I have some buildings up though. Okay, so we put a dent in it, but not enough to, uh, not enough to take it. We do have some other aircraft hopefully coming in there. And maybe they can work off of what we've done so far. We do have a ground attack aircraft coming in on our folks I am going to focus on attacking this German ground attack aircraft from the sides because I just can't afford to let that uh, rear gun chew on us Let's see here Coming in from the sides as much as we can. Saw so to do it. Okay, and it looks like we have a, another one here. From what I have seen, these um, German attack aircraft just have some of the best rear gun coverage of any of them. But you can see the 20 millimeter cannons are pretty effective. Alright, so we'll jump here. And hopefully some of our teammates will come in and help us to Was to take it. So if we can get this command center back, that would be, I think, a good thing. And check out some of this anti aircraft here. Yeah, just chewing us up. So I'm going to risk coming into the airfield here because our um, garrison over here is under attack. So is our command center. So 
got to try to, if we can, prevent those areas from being taken. can't do anything about the command center right now, so... Um, do I have any other assets there? Yeah, what's chewing on us here? And I'm gonna drop a bomb. Well, we don't have a bomb, so... I guess I'm not gonna drop a bomb. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the trouble. Um, if you get into any situation where you've got a maneuverable aircraft, there's just no way. There's no way that the F-7U uh, can hold its own. I was hoping maybe we had a bomb, but we weren't, uh, they had not, uh, respawned for us. another F7U. Flown by a bot. Bomber squadron detected. Engage them immediately. So, in my opinion, uh, there are a lot of other multi-role um, fighters that are superior to the F-7U. We did get the number one spot uh, in Subjugator, and it was a victory for the team. All right, so we destroyed two aerial targets, um, did 42,000 plus in damage to ground targets, um, assisted in capturing uh, three sectors. So, and of course, uh, over 7,000 combat points did get the number one uh, spot on our team. And let's see here. There was a, uh, there were two other ground attack aircraft on our team. Well, we don't have a ground attack aircraft, but honestly, this multi-role uh, F7U plays like a ground attack aircraft, uh, just because it's so uh, poor in the maneuverability department. But you can see here that um, a dedicated ground attack aircraft. 28,000 in damage, 11,000 in damage, uh, headed over, he heading over to the enemy team, 23,000, 18,000. So, uh, you know, for us, 42,000 in damage to ground targets. So, you know, we're, with this multi-role fighter, we are doing the job of a ground attack aircraft. Um, and you saw just how ineffective it was with other aerial targets that are maneuverable. Um, the 20 millimeter cannon certainly can take out uh, enemy aircraft uh, as long as they're not, uh, you know, highly maneuverable. Uh, and then, you know, if they are and it gets into any type of dogfight, we're, we're going to lose that battle. So. My strategy in this aircraft is to try to avoid those types of uh, entanglements. But anyway, um, so you've seen now the F-7U in action. Uh, let's uh, get into one more uh, battle. Uh, 
Okay, so we have drawn the Alpine Gambit, Moment of Truth, Theater of Operation. We will first be headed over here to the garrison, and then from there either to the mining plant or this uh, center garrison, uh, depending upon whether there's anything going on over at the mining plant. Uh, many times uh, enemy ground attack aircraft will head over there, and we'll want to try to prevent them from taking the plant if we can. So as you can see, this is not the prettiest airplane to look upon, <laughs> but it does get the job done. Show me what you can do, pilot. Let's roll. And it's pretty effective. Uh, the bombs have a, a, a good area of effect. So you can, you know, kind of drop the bomb in the middle of, of an area and it will take out pretty much most of the area. So we'll like drop it right here. And you can see it pretty much takes out that whole area there. Drop it right in the center of this cluster of buildings. That's it, folks. Just like that. Pretty effective. And like, we do have the ground attack aircraft over here. So I'm going to head over here and see if possibly we can stop them from uh, securing that area. Okay, where is he at? There he is. And I'm going to drop a bomb. See if that can't get him. Uh, he wasn't going in the direction I thought he was. Now these um, German ground attack aircraft, they are just vicious in terms of the rear gun. You've seriously got to watch that rear gun. This is a human player I see. You can see that um, rear gun there is pretty vicious. In fact, I don't think we want to mess with that anymore. <laughs> We're going to head back here and see if we can do anything about retaking this plant. We don't have any bombs up right now, though. But we'll do what we can until we have bombs up again. We'll be able to take this plant once we get some bombs, but right now, 20 millimeter cannons just aren't going to do it. And we have bombs, so let's get in here and do our magic. Kind of see there, takes that whole area out. Pretty nice. We'll drop right here in the center. And again, you can kind of see, did a pretty good job there. Looks like we need to drop another one though. Quite take it all out. Left the heavy buildings. See, there they go. 
And we are out of bombs now again, unfortunately. So we will work on the anti-aircraft emplacements. What we need over here is some help. Finish taking out this anti aircraft emplacement. And what's going on there is we're setting those on fire and then they're, they're being destroyed by the fire. Pretty close to having bombs again. Turn back. The enemy force is too strong. Okay, so that was a defeat, um, but you did see the effectiveness uh, certainly of the uh, ground attack portion there. Uh, unfortunately, by ourselves, it was a little, you know, without having all of our accoutrements of bombs, it's a little difficult to uh, finish that section off. All right, so we did 35,000 uh, in damage to ground targets, destroyed uh, six ground targets. Uh, did 611 in damage to aerial targets, which is not that much. And you saw, you know, when we tried to uh, take out the uh, P1102B, that the rear gun just pretty much ate this uh, aircraft alive, um, and we had to uh, kind of back off there. But uh, did get the number one position, uh, even over an IL-40P. Uh, which did, which also did about uh, 35,000 in damage to ground targets. So, you know, we equaled the damage done by a dedicated ground attack aircraft. Um, did not get to, you know, showcase this uh, aircraft's uh, effectiveness against other aircraft uh, to any great extent there. Uh, but uh, I think you, you know, these 20 millimeter cannons are on other uh, fighters, uh, and they, they are very effective against um, other aircraft. But the key here, though, is that if you get challenged by a aircraft, uh, another fighter that is highly effective in maneuvering, uh, and in turns, you're not going to have any chance against that later. So keep that in mind. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you get an opportunity to fly this aircraft, um, I hope you have great success in it.